Thank you for tuning in to L.A. Talk Live, reality radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is L.A. Talk Live, and we're more than just talk. Stay tuned. Morning. It's uh, Friday, October 25th. This is Faith on the Front Line coming to you live as a part of the LA Talk Live family. Thank you so much for tuning in to Faith on the Front Line, where it's more than just talk. And we believe that as we address the issues of our community, as members of the faith community, as partners with our friends who are supportive of workers, that we are fulfilling our role and our responsibility as those who believe that God is the God of the oppressed and is unapologetically supportive of those who are under tremendous pressure to provide for their families, to provide for their everyday needs. And I'm glad today to have the opportunity to talk with you. Our fun- Faith on the Frontline family uh, in reference to some of the major issues prevailing in our community today. I'm Dr. Lewis Logan, your executive producer here and host of Faith on the Frontline. My co-host, Reverend William Monroe Campbell, is out of pocket today, but I'm sure he's probably listening from somewhere where he's doing the good work in the community. But I am thankful that there's someone better looking than Reverend Campbell who's with us in studio today, <laughs> and uh, Erandra is uh, a worker at the El Supre uh, supermarket here in Inglewood, or in the sprawling metropolis of Inglewood, if you will. And I'm also joined by Mr. Rigo Valdez, who's organizing director of uh, UFCW 770, a local union that supports more than 32,000 workers throughout the L.A. and uh, Orange County area. And I want to thank you again for joining us on Faith on the Frontline. And I hope that you will uh, listen to the stories and the experiences of our community partners, hard workers who simply want what's right. It's incomprehensible how grocery stores like in El Supre or Ralph's or Albertsons can make billions of dollars annually in net profits and yet not pay their workers so that the workers don't have to support themselves by a combination of their pay and public assistance. So today we are a part of a movement and an action of social justice to bring about parity And as faith community partners, organizations, and leaders, we join with Local 770 UFCW to uplift the workers. So glad to have Brother Van Eric on the line and with us in the studio and doing what he does best, making things happen. That's a good thing to see you, brother. How you doing? I'm doing I'm doing well. Thank doing you well. for allowing me Fantastic. to speak. Fantastic. Got your socks hat on. I don't know what you're trying to do over there. Well, you know, I'm I'm a Michael Jordan fan. I Plus, see. I'm having a bad hair day. I need oh, a I shape see. up. Bad hair. Need yeah, a shape so. up and all that. Well, yeah. I understand. Well, uh, El Super is having a bad hair day as well. They're getting into the hairs of their workers and, and getting into the heads of our workers, creating tremendous havoc and pressure. Uh, Mr. Valdez, are you with us? Brother Rigo, can you hear me? Sorry, you broke up there for a minute. Oh, okay. Can, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Thank you so much for joining us, and I understand that you're on uh, duty, uh, family duty, but you're taking time out to call in and be a part of our conversation today. I want to thank you so much for the work that you've been doing. It's been a pleasure watching you grow in the capacity that you've been uh, developing over the years. And I appreciate so much your willingness to be with us on Faith on the Front Line and making sure that the lovely Miss Kim was also able to bring Elandra to be with us today. Thank you, thank you. Absolutely. (laughs) So, uh, Mr. Valdez, let me kind of ask you to kind of set the 
uh, campaign up, help us to understand what we're coming into, and then we're going to hear from Randa okay. about uh, her role and and how she's been engaged in this fight for better wages at El Supre. Uh, absolutely. Thank you, uh, Reverend Logan, for always being there for uh, the workers, members of, of UFCW Local 770. Your solidarity means a lot to us. It's been a pleasure. Um, so th the workers at El Super um, are fighting for uh, kind of three basic things. The, um, uh, you know, in, in essence, uh, dignity, respect, uh, and a fair contract. Mm -hmm. um, the workers uh, at uh, El Super, most of them are, uh, are either single, uh, mm -hmm. single wage earners mm -hmm. and heads of households, um, that do this either with a part-time job or a full-time job that's mm. not quite full-time. Mm. And what I mean by that is that El Super only guarantees full-time workers 32 hours. Wow. And that's a really big problem, especially if you're a single mother um, and, uh, and you depend on having 40 hours uh, to be able to uh, feed your children. And so that's not good for our community. Um, the other thing uh, is that uh, El Super doesn't pay any sick leave. Mm -hmm. So if you're sick, you have to make a decision on whether uh, you're going to work sick or uh, you're going to uh, take the day off and not be able to afford to either pay your electricity bill, your water bill, um, your phone bill. Um, and that puts families in our community in a really uh, bad situation. Um, bo and both sides, right? Because if you're a worker, uh, you're deciding whether you're going to go to work sick and potentially spread, you know, um, disease, right? Wow. Because you're touching all of the food. Wow. Or, uh, you know, uh, stay at home and then lose out and not be able to afford, uh, uh, you know, to make a living that week. And so that's not good. Mm -hmm. um, and w workers are fighting for respect. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have heard a lot of stories of where managers are abusive or unfair and there's favoritism. Um, and those things uh, are not very good for the morale of the workers. Um, and so what we're seeking is, you know, fairness through a seniority process and scheduling, um, you know, fairness in uh, preferred shifts or shifts that pay differentials so that they could be able to uh, go to those more senior people who put in their time yes. um, and, and have earned that, that right. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, again, you know, dignity, fairness, and respect is, is what uh, uh, El Super workers are, are fighting for. Mm -hmm. And it's very important that we raise the standards uh, at grocery stores like El Super, but in our communities, uh, you know, the big three, the, the Ralphs and the Vons and the Albertsons are leaving, and they're being replaced by these grocery stores. And so certainly, um, as, as a courtesy to the community, the workers in those uh, uh, new markets uh, need to have the same standards because if not, it lowers standards for our, our entire community. Absolutely. 323-473-3100 is the number to call in and make comments or ask questions. We certainly want our Faith on the Frontline family to be a part of this discussion. Again, uh, Mr. Rico Valdez and Ms. Arandra are here with us, and you have the opportunity uh, to inform yourself and perhaps even to be engaged in this ongoing fight along with workers such as Arandra, who finds herself on a daily basis uh, subject to the very kinds of indignities and disrespect that Mr. Valdez just mentioned. Can you share with yeah, us a little um, bit about your experience? I have a story. Um, not too long ago, one of my coworkers, um, I hadn't seen her for a week. I seen her and I approached her as I was walking in. She was walking out and asked her, I was like, hey, how were you? I haven't seen you. And she, she mentioned that she was sick for a week and she had to leave. Cause she, and I asked her, I was like, oh, okay, well, I'm glad you're better. And I guess the ignorance, I, I didn't know, but I was just like, oh, okay, well, I'm glad you're here. And I seen her face, so I had to ask her. I was like, well, are you okay? Because she just looked very upset. And she said, well, yes, I'm glad I'm better, but I just feel very sad because I need to buy school supplies for my son. He just started school. I feel I, I, that money, I, I don't have it. And I, I already spent it, but I didn't have it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it was very personal, but she shared it with me. And 
I just I saw the stress in her face and it made me really upset because that's you know those are coworkers and mm-hmm. El Super we we make a lot of money mm-hmm. every there's once you make a certain amount of money you make a drop every day I work I make like a three thousand dollar drop throughout the day so money is I just I think we forget how valuable the working class is mm-hmm. and we need to protect our society and our community and our people and our workers because mm-hmm. our money it, it goes in and out there's mm-hmm. no loss but. Yeah, sick days should be paid. Mm-hmm. Now you work as a cashier, is that what you're saying? I work as a cashier. I've been mm-hmm. for I've been with El Super for four months. Mm-hmm. I love working there. I love the union. I love the representation. You told you feel it. However, um, like we were mentioning, there's injustice, and the supervisors just have so much power. There's no separation of power, so it's an injustice happening already. But mm-hmm. Like with everything that's unfair, there's an opportunity to make it better, and I believe this is it. So what we need is support, and we need people to communicate and just support the workers, because whether it's family, sister, brothers, we're all affected by it, mm-hmm. community, and we just we we deserve it. Mm-hmm. We all deserve fair treatment. So to your point, you're saying that El Super makes hand over fist in terms of income. Yes, we do. But doesn't pay out. Uh, I mean, if you don't mind, uh, my mm-hmm. asking, uh, what is your hourly wage? I get paid uh, nine dollars and ten cents. Nine dollars and ten cents an yes. hour, and you're a full time student. Yes, I go to Cal State Long mm-hmm. Beach. I'm a full time student, so um, I only have. I work part time. Like I said, it's a good job, and I'm not affected by the sick leaves because, like I said, I'm a student mm-hmm. and. I guess I have other stuff to stress about, mm-hmm. but I see my coworkers. Most of them are single mothers. Mm-hmm. They've been in El Super for years. They've years dedicated years. half of their lives. So mm-hmm. it's, even though I'm not affected by it, mm-hmm. my friends are affected by mm-hmm. it. And now I am affected by mm-hmm. it. Because I could be my mom, you know, mm-hmm. that could, we're all united. So it's very unfair and I see it firsthand. Do I you, see that single mother stressing over not getting paid over sick days or just being sick and working. Yes, yes. Yeah. And and the, those that who are work, who are working while they're sick, I'm they're guilty. handling food and yes. they're around the various. Uh, I'm guilty of doing that life. myself. Yes. Oh really? A chew on you know like the cabbage or something. Sneezing? Or no. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, actually, you know, putting extra sneezing. protein on the. No, no, no. Uh, no. I'm just I'm just <laughs> no chewing of the cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, you know, having to choose. Okay. Um, this money, this check. It's already gone because I already made plans for it and I need to go to work. So I have this amount of hours, this paycheck that I count on. Should I go to work? Should I not? And then, you know, you call in and you, you're like, okay, I'm going to go to work. And they always just force you to go to work. They just always pressure you. So I'm like, okay, I go to work. I'm sneezing. I have a fever. And they mm-hmm. still keep me there. Mm-hmm. They're, they're very pushy. It's, mm-hmm. like I said, no separation of power. It's very unfair what's happening. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it's time. It's happening. Mm-hmm. You know, the re- the contract is going to be renewed, and we need we need to fight for this because this is a step to better, better, de- more fairness. Sure, and yeah. I, and I imagine workers who earn a better wage are able to also spend in the community. Exactly, and revenue, get, economic it, thrift within the. Yes, yeah, so mm-hmm. I don't know. There's a whole bunch. This the whole world is unfair, right? There's mm-hmm. a whole bunch of things I need fixing, but mm-hmm. right now there's an opportunity for us to make a change and improve something so i think we should unite and just step by step with the god of with the help of god you know everything's gonna be better and it's just we need to unite so i mean you're a full-time student how did you uh kind of get hooked into this fight here because a lot of workers probably don't necessarily step up and speak up but what what provoked you to speak up i've always well my major sociology Uh and i i think i want to do law Mm. so uh, since i was small you know Uh it's like i see something unfair like I'm gonna do something about it. I need I to speak up. I need to, I need to say something. And if there's, some, we just, we forget, we underestimate the power of unity. Mm-hmm. And I, I see it, and I want to fight for it. Uh-huh. So at so your I'm particular just, store in Inglewood, do you sense that there are a lot of the your coworkers who are unified, or there's some who feel intimidated, know, or I think that surveillance is uh, mm-hmm. heightened? Just that. Um, they're afraid to speak up because mm-hmm. that's their their income. That's, that's the income right. they depend on. So mm-hmm. I guess they they have a lot. They put a lot in. They they feel like they jeopardize. Mm-hmm. They don't want to push. Mm-hmm. They don't want to. And like I said, there's a lot of unfair unfairness that's going on with mm-hmm. like the power mm-hmm. because they ask you to stay longer. You sure. don't want to stay, mm-hmm. and you really can't speak much about 
what you think it's unfair. Mm -hmm. But like I said, as I'm a, actually I turned 23 today. Oh, so I'm 23. Happy birthday. So I'm, thank you so much. I'm a young adult. Happy birthday. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'm a young adult, so I guess I don't have as many responsibilities. I'm not a mother. Mm -hmm. So even though for myself, I guess I'm, I mean, I'm responsible, of course, but that's not my full-time job. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know what I mean? It's like, but those are my workers, and I need to speak for them. Mm -hmm. Like, if they fire me, I don't, I'm not going to get fired because I have a union that protects me, you know? That's mm -hmm. the beat of a union, but... You have a benefit. No, there. like, I'll speak for them. Mm -hmm. well. And, yeah, I just... Mr. Valdez, uh, t can you talk to us about uh, how the El Supre campaign actually came to be and how you all started to sort of support the workers and uh, was it somebody that came to you and said uh, to talk was it a worker that came to you and shared their experience or how did the campaign actually begin well you know we um El super has uh, 45 stores in the chain okay. uh we represent uh our union represents the seven former gigante stores oh, uh, uh and uh when the, the Gigante stores uh, were organized years ago, uh, they had a contract. Uh, and when that company went bankrupt, uh, it was bought by a new company called Bodega Latina. Mm -hmm. um, and in order for that company to survive, they slashed a lot of benefits and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, did all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, the union agreed in order to save the jobs that were currently there. Okay. Over the last several years, Bodega Latina has made money hand over fist. Mm -hmm. It bought the old Fiesta market. It bought the old KV mark. It is in a very good financial position. It's actually owned by the larger, the, the third largest Mexican grocery store called Grupo Chedraui. Uh, so it's a very different space, and uh, I think that workers have now seen the turnaround in this market and have now seen uh, the influx of you know, so many more sales, uh, you know, a, a lot of money coming in, and um, and they want to share in that profit, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, you know, compared to Ralph Lons and Albertsons, these workers are paid um, uh, a lot less. Mm -hmm. They get a lot less benefits, uh, a lot less holidays. Mm -hmm. They don't have uh, any sick leave. Um, and so workers came up to us and said, we want parity. Mm -hmm. But we don't want parity for ourselves in the seven stores. We want parity for all of super workers. Mm -hmm. We want all of super workers to enjoy the benefit of having a union. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, these workers started to stand up and mm -hmm. start getting strong and started wow. to talk to each other okay. and started to say, listen, all of these things that are happening to us, they don't happen at other grocery stores. They have a much stronger contract, and that's what we want. I see. Um, and so we working with, uh, with workers in Orange County and L.A. County sure. um, to make sure that, that they were all strong and that they were going to stay united um, to make sure to change their working conditions, not just for themselves, but for other workers that, that, uh, within the chain that don't have a union, um, and to hopefully uh, be able to um, give them a voice uh, through a union contract. Um, uh, Erendira mentioned, you know, that she's not as afraid to get fired if you have a union contract that backs her up, mm -hmm. and that's absolutely correct, mm -hmm. right? And Stronger so together. if our union members feel fear, can you imagine uh, in the stores where there, are, wow. where there is no union? Wow. Um, and and if, if we hear about all of these unfair uh, treatment that happens in the union stores, can you imagine the, the treatment that happens in the non-union stores? I think as we've been talking to, um, and a lot of uh, based on this big rally that we had, uh, a few days ago, a lot of non-union workers have now started to call us and say, hey, you know, what about us? We, yeah. we want to join the fight, too. And so, yeah. um, you know, we're going to, um, we're going to fight hard yeah. to make sure that uh, the workers at El Super in our union stores uh, get the increase that they deserve because this company um, is making money hand over fist in the United States and in Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, fight I mean, I mean, those workers that, that don't get a union so that they can share in that prosperity as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much, and forgive my uh, cutting you. I wanted to ask you, though, uh, have you all done a comparative of the pay of the union stores versus the pay of the workers in the non-union stores? Um, we know that they make less. We, mm -hmm. we don't have uh, an, an analysis. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that we also know is, is that in the union stores, because people have a little bit more security and have guaranteed hours, 
at 32 and uh, at 32 hours and 24 hours that the workers at the union stores are more longer term workers than in the non union stores. The non union stores have a constant different. turnover because yeah. you know uh, they they don't move up, and so it's it's really hard. But um, uh, uh, we don't have a. Uh, 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 a kind of a scientific analysis. It okay. won't take very long, uh, uh, doctor, to get to that. Uh, as more and more uh, non-union health super workers reach out to us and tell us their story. I appreciate that. Three two three four seven three thirty one hundred. We're going to take uh, just a bit of a break. Give uh, Mr. Valdez a moment to breathe and and under a moment mm-hmm. to sort of just kind of relax his shoulders, and um, we'll continue this discussion about El Supre. Not doing a super job of respecting (laughs) its workers. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Thanks. If you're like me, it's lunchtime, and I want to thank our sponsors of the Faith on Frontline radio broadcast in the form of Uncle Darrell's Cajun Cuisine at 2560 Lincoln Boulevard, Marina Del Rey, and also Doolin's on Crenshaw, that soul food restaurant owned by Greg Doolin, my good friend and brother, 4859 Crenshaw Boulevard, right here in Los Angeles, California. We want to thank them for being our special sponsors for Faith on the Front Line. I want to encourage all my Faith on the Front Line listeners, if you're hungry, if you want seafood, Uncle Darrell's Cajun Cuisine is the place to go right there, 2560 Lincoln Boulevard on the corner of Lincoln and Washington Boulevard. And if you want some soul food and you know you're not on a diet but need to be, but you're willing to skip it just for a quick second, I'd encourage you to go to Doolin's right there on Crenshaw Boulevard, 4859. Greg will take care of you. His wonderful staff will smile at you and they will pile it on. I'm telling you, it's ridiculous. Good food, good cuisine. Thank you for being our sponsors. Faith on the Frontline family, go and support Uncle Daryl's and Doolin's. Thank you so much. Faith on the Frontline listeners, this is Dr. Lewis Logan, your executive producer, giving thanks and props to one of our sponsors, United We Ship, 877-229-0577, that's 877-229-0577. Any shipping logistical needs you may have, whether it's a small letter or a larger parcel or whatever it is you need, Michelle Israel and the professional staff of United We Ship will take care of all of your shipping needs. They're going toe-to-toe with the big boys, UPS and FedEx, and they're going to make it happen nationwide through their network of shipping logistics capacity. They are sponsors of Faith on the Frontline, and I highly recommend that you call Michelle Israel at 877-229-229. 0577 for any of your shipping needs. They are special sponsors of Faith on the Frontline. He stepped out on faith. Let's step up and support him. Thank you. Hi, this is Don Christie inviting you to join me every Friday, 1 p.m. Pacific, for my all new show, The Don Christie Show. Join me as I discuss love, spiritual readings. Your purpose. Why am I born? What am I here to do? So don't forget to tune in the Dawn Christie Show at 1 p.m. Pacific exclusively on LA Talk Live. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio RB or watch us on Ustream TV Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is L.A. Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Hello, I'm 
Joel Ramirez. And I'm Lolita Robinson Coppage, and welcome to Joy in My House on LATalkLive.com. Inspirational radio with a touch of recovery. A reality show where nothing is left unsaid and no one is insignificant who says it. Exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio RB or watch us on Ustream TV. Reality Radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live and we are more than just talk. Hi, this is Barbara Perkins inviting you to join us every Sunday afternoon at 2.40 for Sisters at the Well Radio, a conversation with women about women. Join us as we share stories about current events, jazz events, business opportunities, health and wellness, entertainment, and so much more. So don't forget to tune in Sundays at 2.40 exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio R&B, Live 365, Radio Flag, or watch and listen directly at latalklive.com. Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Thank you for staying with us. This is Dr. Lewis Logan, executive producer of Faith on the Front Line. And you're joining us during our support segment for the workers of El Supre. And later we're going to talk to and about, actually, the Walmart effort uh, that will take place early next month. We have Mr. Rico Valdez, organizing director of UFCW 770. And we have also the illustrious and the somewhat infamous Irandra, who has <laughs> been shaking it up over at El Supre on, in Inglewood. And we've been talking about the courage to step up and stand up for yourselves, especially for those who she has empathized with within her circle of co-workers and how she can be a vital part as anyone. Uh, who cares, like you, who may be listening or watching. I want to invite uh, fellow co-workers, the grocery workers and other workers who have worked at El Supre to uh, call in, 323-473-3100. I think we have a caller. This may be uh, an opportunity to talk with you. Um, greetings. You are uh, welcome to Faith on the Frontline. How are you? Okay. <laughs> I guess they uh, hung up. Maybe they'll call back. Uh, is uh, Mr. Valdez still on the line? Mr. Valdez. Uh, Mr. Yes. Mr. Valdez, uh, thanks for hanging on uh, during our break. I wanted to ask you, uh, in terms of the future of the actual campaign, what do you see as the prospects for uh, a settlement or a contract? And then also, the, as you mentioned prior to our break, there have been uh, non-union workers who've watched the gigantic or gigantor action that you conducted a few days ago and who are now interested, perhaps even emboldened by your example of courage last week. Um, what do you see as the future of, of your movement and campaign? Well, I think that the future is in the hands of, of the, the workers at El Super. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, as they stay strong or as they get stronger and it looks like they're getting stronger every day, um, you know, the company will see that, in fact, um, there are some uh, essential policy changes that need to happen uh, to make certain that people uh, at El Super feel respected. Mm -hmm. um, as well as, you know, respect includes being able to make a, a, dis a decent living and live, Absolutely. you know, uh, live well. Mm -hmm. And so certainly, you know, for, for us, respect also means that, uh, that you have a living wage, Absolutely. not a minimum wage. Mm -hmm. Uh, a fair wage, yes. one that you can live off of in a yes. city as expensive as Los Angeles. Um, and so, you know, when we did our, our rally, our rally had a, a, around a thousand people yes. um, and, uh, and was supported by uh, a lot of the local community groups, uh, uh, you know, around uh, South, uh, South L.A. And so the, um, I think that the power that the community brings to say, 
um, that the unfair treatment of workers in our community is not a good thing mm -hmm. uh, lends that power to, to the workers. But the workers have to stand up for themselves and yes. say, this is what we really want. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that that's what, what's happening at El Super. And mm -hmm. um, I think uh, we, we're going to meet with our our committee mm -hmm. to see, uh, you know, what is the next action that mm -hmm. they're willing to engage upon. Mm -hmm. Again, the action that we had uh, was very large and it got, uh, garnered quite a bit of media attention. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, at, People called their office and said, hey, how do I get involved? What do I need to do? Uh, this is great. We feel like the community has our back, that the union has our back, and so ready to fight. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's a great uh, uh, place to be. Absolutely. Uh, Erandra, what was it like to have all of the community partners and clergy and faith leaders uh, standing with you? I w are, you, are you referring to the rally? The rally and just in general. Okay. Well, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it to the rally, okay. but I got some pictures from my coworkers. Okay. And um, the following days, customers asked, like, mm -hmm. oh, we seen you in the news. What was uh, that all about? Uh -huh. So, you know, it's a lot of curiosity. Mm -hmm. And with curiosity comes answers and questions. So we're in the right track. And mm -hmm. I, I see it happening. Mm -hmm. we're, we, like, we, we're becoming stronger. We're, mm -hmm. we're speaking about it. And it, I see the unity. And it's... So you see the community support leveraging oh, yes, into very much. the faith leaders. Is that, do you feel like that's essential, the, the support of faith leaders? Very much. I think that's why I've, I, I love my job. Mm -hmm. I've, had, I've worked, I think, a, I've, I've had five different jobs, mm -hmm. but this job in particular, I love it because you get a sense of community. You mm -hmm. see familiar faces, and whether it's that customer that's really nice or that customer that's, some, that's always very bossy, it's mm -hmm. everybody's part of the community, and you just you know they live there, and it's... I myself like, mm -hmm. live in Englewood, so mm -hmm. it's just familiar faces, and it's... The community, the, it matters to them, matters to every, Yeah. I see. Okay. I see it. Absolutely. Support. At the bargaining table, Mr. Valdez, uh, what are some of the progresses, progresses, and some of the issues uh, that you still see that you're butting heads against the management with respect to? Well, you know, we have... Um, about 40-some proposals at the bargaining table. Wow. Um, you know, yeah. Um, because, again, you know, we want to, uh, you know, in a, in a mature contract like Ralph's and Hans Albertson's, we probably wouldn't have that many proposals. Mm -hmm. But this, this, um, this contract uh, is so far under par compared mm -hmm. to, uh, uh, you know, the other contracts mm -hmm. that... that uh, you know, we needed that many proposals to really try to bring it up to par. Yeah. Um, um, and we intend to make a big leap forward this mm -hmm. time uh, because that's what the workers want and they're ready to fight for it. Mm -hmm. So, Absolutely. So El Supre has a fight on its hands. Hopefully they'll do the right thing. Uh, and Andra, any other uh, comments or uh, expressions you want to give any shout outs to uh, co-workers uh, family friends or Ooh, just in terms never... of encouraging co-workers <laughs> to stand up for themselves if you um, have any words like that shout out to everybody that speaks out on what is unfair and let's not forget the power of unity of mm -hmm. society and together we're so much more so mm -hmm. that's my shout out to everybody and to our troops actually Troops, because this is a battle. This is a yes, war yeah. uh, for the souls of our community. We need community partners who not only come in and take uh, extract uh, a lot of wealth, but also willing to invest in those who help create the wealth. And it's the workers who help create the wealth. And you're a part of that. I appreciate the fact that you see that. One of the things I am admiring about what's ha what's going on in your life is not only are you a student, which puts you into the realm of being uh, someone who's learning and oftentimes um, uh, engaging in theories and ideas, mm -hmm. but you're also having the opportunity to put those ideas into practice. It's, it's you're uh, offering yourself a place of well-rounded development, particularly in your uh, social science uh, emphasis. Uh, you'll see uh, that... Um, uh, it takes, uh, as you have said, the power of unity to construct and develop a social matrix where people feel uh, that they can thrive and develop and grow uh, and they can uh, support 
and um, uh, foster human dignity and and primacy. So I think that's really important. You get to not only read about it in textbooks, but you get to put it into practice. That's amazing. Yeah, that was beautiful. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, I feel very fortunate to be here, and I feel lucky to be part of this mm-hmm. big step mm-hmm. to... You know, some of what you're doing will actually be taught in the years to come in textbooks. Some of your some of the work that you do in movements will be a part of the uh, history of uh, Inglewood and the history of Los Angeles. And workers from years uh, down the line will benefit from a better contract without having to put 50 different proposals together to make one decent proposal may oftentimes take for granted the tremendous work that you're doing. So you're, in a way, you're kind of a pioneer. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't Dr. know. Dr. Lewis, Dr. Lewis yes, I want to ask the, uh, your guests a question. Now, as far as this particular store, what would you like to see them offer you, their employees, like, you know, one of the first five things, if, that, if you may? Most definitely sick days. Mm-hmm. We want those sick, day, those sick days to be paid. Mm-hmm. Sick days along with seniority, which means what's happening right now, you get to a certain amount of pay raise, and then they cut it off. Mm. So that shouldn't happen. Mm. Yes. Maximizing profits. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm wondering, as you emphasize and talk about sick pay and sick days and how workers actually work while they're ill, mm-hmm. uh, and perhaps, Mr. Valdez, you can speak to this as well. I mean, have there been any uh, complaints to uh, OSHA or... Uh, the health department, in reference to uh, what could probably be infractions, like serious infractions, uh, in terms of regulations for, you know, healthy uh, food servicing uh, uh, businesses like a supermarket. Yeah, you know, I I hate to make excuses for our government, but you know, the, in you know, in kind of our our own kind of austerity measures within. Uh, uh, within our government at the state and, and county levels, um, there are not enough inspectors to come out wow. and say, uh, this is what needs to happen and uh, this is the infractions. And sometimes the infractions are so small that uh, um, employers that are this large just absorb it as mm-hmm. a cost of doing business. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it becomes, it becomes endemic and it's, it's not a, a very good practice. And so it really does take workers themselves standing up and saying, this is not right to fix it. Mm-hmm. And perhaps even uh, thinking, and let me again appeal to our listeners, if you are a grocery, if you're a, a, a worker in a grocery store, or whether it's Ralph's or Albertsons, you can be anonymous. You don't have to say what store you're working in, but you work in the commercial food industry and you want to ask a question or lend a word of support, please feel free to call us at 323-473-3100. Say hello to us if you want to respond to the shout out. Uh, just offered by Erandra, or you want to say hello to Mr. Valdez, or even to me, I uh, feel free to call in and, and tell us your story as well, 323-473-3100. And so absolutely, there is um, uh, there's a role, I would think, for even sh- uh, shoppers, uh, customers who feel <laughs> like uh, they want to write a complaint, perhaps. I mean... It's the customers that make also help to create the wealth along with the workers. Oh, definitely. And that we forget that. When you have happy customers, mm-hmm. when you have happy employees, you have That's happy right. customers. Yes, sir. When you have That's happy right. customers, it's, it's benefits everybody. There's The money's there. Action is, needs to be taken. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well said. You've done, you've done a wonderful <laughs> job today, and I hope that uh, any way we can be of support, uh, we'll see you in an, an upcoming actions, I know. Uh, maybe you'll have an opportunity to be out there and let your voice be heard and tell your story and share the stories of those who don't have the opportunity to do that. Uh, we have the same kinds of unfortunate challenges with another major retailer, perhaps the number one retailer in the world, uh, Walmart, uh, which also pays its workers paltry wages and for whatever reasons, well, of course we know it's money, it's about wages, it's about uh, profit, uh, has no problem with its uh, workers uh, being dependent on public assistance. Uh, Mr. Valdez, uh, how is the Walmart campaign comparative to the El Supre campaign? 
Well, you know, uh, Walmart is, uh, you know, the largest corporation in, in the world, mm. <laughs> uh, the largest employer in the United States. Wow. Um, so it kind of uh, uh, has uh, required a different kind of campaign. Mm. You know, the workers at uh, Walmart have formed an organization. It's uh, our Walmart organization, wow. United for Respect at Walmart. Um, and they've been organizing themselves. They've, uh-huh. been, they've done su- a very good job, you know, uh, there's a very good committee people uh, who stood up and really exposed working conditions in the Crenshaw location as well as Pico Rivera and uh, uh, other uh, locations around uh, Southern California. Um, and I don't know if people remember, but last year uh, at, on Black Friday, uh, thousands of, of associates all over the country went on strike uh, without a union uh, wow. to... Uh, really uh, protest the working conditions there that, that, in fact, the working conditions there are not safe. People are asked to move uh, things that are very big and, and have so much pressure put on them to do things quickly that, um, you know, uh, accidents happen um, at a much more frequent rate than they should. Um, on top of that, you know, Walmart uh, uh, says itself uh, uh, and actually uh, said itself recently uh, that the workers there, uh, even at full time, uh, could only possibly make less than $25,000 a year, which is certainly not enough to um, feed a family on. Um, and part-time workers, uh, not even 10. So, you know, it's it's an interesting place to be. Uh, uh, when the workers first started organizing here in Los Angeles, a lot of them came and did a press conference in front of the Department of uh, Social Services and, and were joined by members of you of uh, SEIU 721 who are case right. workers and social workers right. um, to protest that in fact this company wants to grow in Southern California uh, when it doesn't even take um, care right. of its own right. workers, right? right? Uh, that a lot of their workers are part of county programs of sure. uh, Medi-Cal, Medicare, um, and, uh, and uh, county assistance. Um, and so certainly a, a corporation this big that makes money hand over fist mm-hmm. Um, to uh, make its workers depend on uh, public assistance when we see the cutbacks are happening, um, again, in state and local government because, uh, you know, uh, we're not taking in enough tax dollars. Um, it's just ludicrous. And so um, the, wor- uh, the workers have uh, now targeted, as well as the community have now targeted, a newly opened um, uh, mm-hmm. store in Chinatown. Um, you know, the community in Chinatown fought and fought and mm-hmm. fought uh, that um, that store opening and it opened anyways and so um, so they want to uh, send a very loud message on November seventh that uh, that working conditions are not good and and that uh, you know the communities here in Los Angeles will not stand for the spread of bad jobs that then become uh, a burden on taxpayers. Hold up, wait, wait just a minute, wait just a minute, because I remember being a part of a lot of the protestations prior to the opening of the store that you just referenced. That's in Chinatown, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I remember us being on the corners, and I remember uh, civil disobedience actions and arrests and all kind of protestations. How in the world did, I mean, Inglewood fought off Walmart. How did it get into Chinatown? You know, I, it, it's really crazy because, you know, the Inglewood community got together, they put mm-hmm. together a ballot initiative, mm-hmm. and they fought hard, and there is no Walmart in Inglewood. Yeah. The same thing happened in Burbank just recently. Uh, after a two-year fight, mm-hmm. uh, it had to go all the way to court. Uh, Walmart fought and fought and fought, and the city was found to be wrong for approving mm-hmm. Walmart's permits to uh, open a store in the Empire Center in Burbank. Um, but we believe that something dirty happened in the city of Los Angeles um, because the community in yeah, can you imagine yeah, yeah, uh, really. that, that the community fought really hard uh, and Dr. Logan, you were a part of this fight. Uh, uh, they they uh, the community put together uh, uh, legislation that was going forward um, at city council uh, and. Magically, magically, I don't know how, uh, 15 permits were issued uh, to Walmart to open the day before the legislation that would have necessarily, would have put a pause uh, on, on the issuance of these permits. 
um, uh, were issued at 4.45 p.m. the day before wow. the vote happened at, wow. uh, at uh, City Council. Now, mm. I don't know if anybody who's gotten even one permit the last 15 minutes uh, <laughs> uh, that department is open in the city of, of Los Angeles, much less 15. Wow. Well, we all yeah. know what uh, oils the wheels of uh, certain transactions and and, uh, and motions. We know what happens. As you said, something dirty happened. And unfortunately, uh, when people are submerged under profits, uh, the needs of community yeah. become secondary to the push for cash. So we, we, see what ha- we see what happens there. And, of course, unfortunately... Uh, Walmart, true to form, has continued its same practices as it, as it has done nation and worldwide. So talk to us about the no, November 7th action and what we hope to accomplish there. Uh, for sure. You know, uh, we will be joined by 100 individuals who will commit acts of civil disobedience, which means mm-hmm. that they'll be uh, arrested to prove the point that um, the criminals here are, are you know, Walmart. Mm-hmm. And so... Certainly what we want to say is, is that not in our community do you get to bully your way in um, uh, and, and do it, you know, in the cloak of secrecy. We will expose you. Um, the workers want to say that there should be no more expansion of Walmart uh, in Los Angeles as long as they don't take care of their workers. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the workers in Pico Rivera work under uh, atrocious conditions. The workers in, in Crenshaw work under atrocious conditions. Um, and so we will not stand for any more Walmarts to be built until the problems of the Walmarts that currently exist are fixed. Absolutely. Uh, because what you do is you're spreading uh, bad jobs, and we don't need any more bad jobs. We need good jobs in L.A. Now, what time and exactly what location or what, address or what are the logistics around the November 7th action? Sure. The, um, it will be at 5 o'clock. Um, uh, so uh, if you're not going to go there uh, to, uh, to rally, stay away from that area. <laughs> and it will be in Chinatown. Okay. Right. Uh, it will be in Chinatown. Um, so no back alley to uh, stage everything. There's no, uh, no kind of... Uh, area where things can be in secret until you get ready to jump out and make it known. It's nothing like what happened in Inglewood, huh? No, you know, what we're going to do is uh, uh, we are going to um, have a protest. It's going to be on the corner of Cesar Chavez, uh, okay. uh, right in front of the store, Cesar Chavez and uh, and uh, 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 here, let me, I'm trying to pull this up really quickly. Mm-hmm. I believe it is uh, Cesar Chavez and Spring Street, oh, uh, where you know we've had uh, 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 actions before. As yes. a matter of fact, yes. uh, just last month, um, 25 workers um, and supporters were arrested mm-hmm. um, to call upon Walmart to do the right thing. Um, there were uh, workers uh, that traveled from all over the country to wow. Walmart's. Um, wow. Shareholders meeting mm-hmm. uh, in Bentonville, Arkansas, mm-hmm. um, and they were on strike protesting unfair labor practices within Walmart. Mm-hmm. And when they came back, a lot of them were retaliated against. Some of them were fired, mm-hmm. and none of them have been reinstated. And and so those workers were arrested in a show of of uh, unity and strength mm-hmm. um, to call upon Walmart to do the right thing and. Sure. Uh, hire those workers back and undo those suspensions and undo those write-offs uh, because they were unfair. I see. Uh, and did I hear you say that a hundred people are going to get arrested? A hundred people are going to be arrested. Um, wow. This uh, will pro- will mark uh, probably the largest, largest uh, yeah. civil disobedience mm-hmm. against Walmart ever. And I think it's and probably so, the largest um, I have seen. Period here in L.A. Southern California. I- yeah. Um, uh, so, you know, hopefully you'll join us. Uh, hopefully other people will join us. There's still time if, if you want to participate in the civil disobedience action to sign up for that. Anybody who's listening, uh, uh, yourself, uh, Reverend. Um, <laughs> um, uh, uh, workers from, uh, from the Crenshaw store will be arrested. Workers from Pico Rivera store will be arrested, uh, as well as uh, community leaders from all over Los Angeles, 
faith leaders, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, uh, leaders of, of public policy uh, uh, groups will be um, uh, will also be arrested. Uh, and so we want this to be the largest showing uh, 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 to let Walmart know that it's not okay, um, that they cannot bully the city of Los Angeles, they cannot bully their way in, and that they cannot bully workers here, that there are people here to stand up for them. Absolutely. I think that that will certainly make a statement nationwide. I have not heard of a larger civil disobedient action anywhere in the country in reference to Walmart. I could be wrong. But I think that it would certainly send a message around the world that we're serious about uplifting the workers and creating an environment of parity uh, where the workers are treated with dignity. Are you um, aware of uh, any other of uh, the, I, I don't know, demands of the workers in addition? Is it similar to the El Supre uh, store where it's sick pay and uh, sick leave and those kinds of uh, benefit requests or demands? Yeah, you know, the difference between the, the, the El Super workers is, is that, that a lot of them already have a voice, and so um, they're utilizing their voice at the bargaining table for fi to fight for more, uh, to fight for more for themselves, but also to fight for more for other workers that don't have a voice. Um, and the problem in, in Walmart is is that there are no union unionized Walmart uh, anywhere in the United States, um, and so they they're formulating demands of of Walmart just to obey the law, yeah. right? And, and so you know they uh, they would like to improve working conditions, uh, but uh, you know we we haven't gotten to that place yet mm -hmm. where. Uh, we can we have a structure and a recognition to be able to put in writing, uh, 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 you know, in a an enforceable contract, mm -hmm. the the demands that that uh, um, that Walmart workers have, and so uh, you know those workers again, you know, have created their own organization, our Walmart, which you know some substitutes as as their own organization to build power within. Uh, within Walmart because they don't have a union. And so uh, they use that as the vehicle to organize themselves and to build power within their work site. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, uh, in a lot of places, you know, they've made some change. Not enough, you know, not enough to feel like uh, that, that, you know, the largest employer in America uh, uh, really deserves to treat uh, uh, its workers well. Uh, makes money hand over fist here and internationally, um, and they should share that wealth. You know, the the, uh, the Walton family is amongst the richest um, right. uh, and the largest concentration of wealth in America. Sure, absolutely. I think that uh, one of the uh, unspoken uh, similarities between the two campaigns is that um, organizing and suffering are key components to the struggle itself. It helps to be a perpetuating uh, push for parity when people see one another in a mode of struggling, uh, suffering, not just on the job because of the indignities of the job, but the incredible, indomitable spirit of those who are willing to step up like uh, Andra and like other workers uh, in the Walmart industry uh, who are being pushed around, like you said, who have to make choices that oftentimes put their own health at risk, but because they have to support their families, they suffer through those kinds of uh, disrespectful experiences. I think it's egregious for um, you know older uh, workers in their f 40s and 50s to be disrespected, any, any age really, but when you're your parent, your grandparent, and you're being you know treated a certain way and talked to a certain way, I think it's just something reprehensible about that as we talk about respecting our elders and those who have uh, you know, really worked hard for many years. I think as you continue to develop, you, you should garner respect just like those who have a certain kind of seniority on their job. So um, I'm hoping that uh, those of you who are Walmart uh, workers, those who uh, even shop at Walmart, you have a voice. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a right to speak up on behalf of the workers and to demand that they um, adhere to the law. And, and speaking about the law, are you saying that there's a, a livable wage ordinance that uh, Walmart is violating? Is that what you're talking about, or what exactly? Well, you know, 
So we have an unfair labor practice, oh, uh, and when I say I, I, and when I say we, I don't mean we the UFCW. I mean we, uh, uh, those who support the Walmart workers mm-hmm. uh, at, in our Walmart, um, uh, because when workers exercise their right to come together, mm-hmm. they should not be retaliated, sure. and that's the law. Sure. And so when 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 Walmart breaks the law, mm-hmm. uh, they need to feel the consequences. Mm-hmm. And if uh, if uh, so if through our own um, justice system, justice is not swift. Mm-hmm. Uh, the court of public opinion mm-hmm. is where we take our fight, and mm-hmm. so that's what we're doing. I wanted to make one correction. I had said that it was Cesar Chavez and Spring Street. It's actually Cesar Chavez and Grand. Okay. So I want to make sure that that's Thursday, November 7th, 5 p.m., uh, uh, on uh, the intersection of Cesar Chavez Avenue and Grand. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Any uh, final words of encouragement for... Uh, workers, organizers, uh, for community partners. Uh, what was the number to call if you want to uh, volunteer yourself as a living sacrifice, if you will, to be arrested? I know I have to, I need to check my record to see if I'm still on probation. I'm not sure. You know, your <laughs> brothers get lost. Yes, uh, you, you have lockdown. to do that. Make sure you don't have any outstanding parking yes, tickets. Yeah, for you. Real, I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> so, uh, so our contact person for that is... Uh, uh, you know, this is this is uh, sponsored by the Los Angeles Federation of Labor. Uh, this rally is, um, and uh, Hector Saldivar is the uh, contact person, and his number is two one three three eight one five six one one extension one thirty six. Again, one Hector mm-hmm. Saldivar two one three three eight one five six one one extension one thirty six. If you want to volunteer, you want to bring something out. Uh, or you want to be arrested, that's your guy. Absolutely. And I want to also encourage all of our faith leaders uh, to pray for uh, the workers, to pray to offer this Sunday, if you will. Make this uh, Worker Sunday, a Worker Prayer Sunday, a part of your altar calls, a part of your uh, your prayer meetings, uh, that you would offer prayer for the uh, Supre workers, walk, uh, offer prayer for the Walmart workers. I want to uh, put a notice out for our Faith on the Front Line listeners that uh, this is prayer time. We know that the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. Uh, First Chronicles 7 14 comes to mind. If my people will call by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, and I'll hear from heaven, will forgive their sins, and will heal the land. And God knows. In a context where workers are disrespected as those who are both at El Supre and at Walmart, the land needs healing. The land needs parity. The land needs justice. And prayer makes the difference. I want to thank Mr. Rigo Valdez, organizing director of UFCW 7070. I want to thank his supervisors and his leaders, Mr. John Grant, secretary treasurer, and Mr. Rick Ikaza, uh, local president of 770. I want to thank the vivacious Miss Kim for making the logistical uh, essentials uh, available for Miss Arandra to be here. I want to thank Miss Arandra to be here with her feisty self. Mm-hmm. And I want to thank all of you, listeners of Faith on the Front Line, and Mr. Van Eric that makes it happen, holds it down. And I want to thank our sponsors, Mr. Doolin and uh, Mr. Norwood, Mr. Doolin's, Doolin's Restaurant on uh Crenshaw Boulevard and Doolin's, I'm sorry, um, uh, Uncle Darrow's on Lincoln at Washington. If you're hungry and you're in the Marina Del Rey area, Uncle Darrow's is the place. If you're in the old Fox Hills area, Doolin's is the spot uh, to handle that hole in your stomach for lunchtime. I might see you there and you will be treated because... Mm-hmm. I'm coming large and in charge. Thank you so much. I hope you will see you next week on Faith on the Front Line. Let's pray for the workers. Let's stand up for justice. And let's not just talk about it. Let's be about it. Thank you so much for listening. God bless. <laughs>